All right. Hey, everyone. I am here with Brian Christie and Kenny Zarella. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> All right. Uh, out of Agents out of Connecticut with William Ravis Real Estate. So you guys have built your business on circle prospecting. How is it for you? Tell us how you did that. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Jennifer, thank you for having us on. We really do appreciate the chance to be on your podcast. We're really yeah. excited. Um, and we actually, you know, it's funny. We spoke with you a few weeks back about um, using Vulcan 7. And if it was a smart move for us and you were just adamant that it was something we need to try and start doing, especially because we do like to cold call a lot. We do call prospects, we do call neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of the circle prospecting, circle dialing, whatever you want to, you know, term it, is that with Vulcan, you can set that radius and basically have the conversation. And I just did it for one of my clients today. They sold their house. So I called basically everyone in the neighborhood they wanted to be in, which is still near their old home. Correct. And I said, hey. Of course, nobody moves very far ever. It's no, like they, a couple they, miles. Have, they want to add like 800 square feet to their house, which is always fun in this market to try and find something close. Same school district, but just bigger. Um, but I actually booked an appointment for them Tuesday next week. So, I mean, hey. it definitely works. And I think what's nice about it is when you sell a home, in that circle, it already gives you your lead in. Yep. There's so it no, doesn't really feel like a cold call, right? It's not. It, it's just a conversation. That's and that's yeah. the way I look at it with the people. I say, you know, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, how are you? Oh, good. You know, this is Brian Christie, local real estate agent. Do you have a moment for a quick conversation? Yeah. And nine out of 10 say yes, no problem. I like how you say that, Kenny. Is that what you say? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Brian's a very optimistic guy, which is awesome. Brian's Brian's killing it right now with the with the circle prospecting. But yes, you know, you you know the neighborhood, you know the area, you know the the demographic basically. So you are confident in that call. I think circle prospecting is great for that reason. Um, and again, you just you just really know that area. And like yeah. Brian said, you're almost not cold calling to kind of step into that neighborhood. You're already there. You already have a presence there. So I think well, it's, really it's cool. a lot easier if you've bought, if you've represented a seller or a buyer. And I think like what people forget, if you've represented the seller, it's a lot easier because they've had the sign up. Right. But if you represent the buyer, go ahead and see if they'll let you put the sign up for like a couple of weeks. They probably will. Right. And say sold by or whatever. And that's when you can like do your circle, circle prospecting and door knocking and you should get like an additional at least few pieces of business off of that but like at Definitely. least one if not like three especially in this market it seems like a lot better and, and i think you know to your point in this market people are at least willing to have the conversation correct right because now they're getting numbers for their homes that they were you know was a All -time far fetched high. dream years yeah. ago right no like yeah like a year ago and i think <laughs> like too, not I think I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think people are confident with you too. I, again, if you if you have sold in that area, you know they're 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 more up to talking to you, and you're going to give them facts as to what the home has has been selling for, the kind of activity, saying, yeah. hey, listen, we've had 60 showings. You have a very similar home next door, or four or five houses down. Mm -hmm. So it definitely breeds uh, activity. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm just looking at you guys. You guys should have been on our clubhouse today. We were talking about doesn't matter what you wear. Always, oh, always. you know, you know, it's funny dress to impress. I just beat an agent out for a listing um, in Monroe and the seller actually told the other agent, he goes, he's a winner. And he actually wore a suit to the appointment. And nice. that's why I gave it to him. And I, I laughed because it was funny, but to think like it's a profession, you got to come in dressed to impress. I hear you. And my, one of my co-hosts on the, the clubhouse, his name is TJ. He says the exact same thing. He wears like what you guys are wearing, like fitted suits, Button down, nice looking button down. But do you wear a tie? I'm wearing boxers, by the way, so you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I wear a tie if I feel it calls for it, which I know sounds funny, but there's certain listing appointments we go on when I'm like, this house and this person might respond well to a fully dressed look. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. they're really dressed to impress. And I think you kind of get that vibe on the phone. You know what I mean? You yeah. kind of know who you're talking to. For sure. No, that makes sense. That's funny. Yeah. We got, we would have gotten in a big fight about it because I don't think it matters, but I don't wear, I don't wear a tie to, to answer your question. But no, yeah. I see your pocket square. Yeah. Yeah. You have a good eye. You're good. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say back to circle prospecting. Exactly. So, okay. What are some other reasons if you don't have something that you have um, helped a client buy or sell in the neighborhood, have you called neighborhoods beside like outside of that like and what are you calling Definitely. for what do you say you want to take this one yeah i got it so what we do is we kind of have um 
I wouldn't say it's a set script, but it is a set kind of idea where we say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we usually like to call homes we mail to as well once a month. So they at least are familiar with our names. Okay. So if we mail to 400 houses in this neighborhood, we're going to start with those calls anyway. These are like, a, this is like a geographic farm. Correct. Oh, yep. And I, but I, I apply it with the calling first and then I kind of branch from there. But if there's nothing, you know, never mail, never nothing. What I'll say is, hey, you know, it's Brian, local real estate agent with XYZ. You know, do you have a moment? Um, sure, Brian, what's up? Well, I'm sure you're aware, but we're seeing these crazy inflated costs, you know, for homes going. Have you given any thought as to what your home could be worth in today's market? You know, are you thinking about a refi or a HELOC or just do you want to know? Right, and we've right. gotten in people's doors just with that. And we ended up, you know, we do CMAs for them. And yeah. we're actually in talks with three people now to list their home potentially this summer because right. I don't think it's quite tangible until you see it in front of you. Like, right. wow, like this house at my price point is 20% more than it was this time last year. Yes. Like that's bananas. It's insane. Yeah. yeah. But I like how like you're keeping the script simple because I've, I've dealt with a lot of real estate agents and they try to say, all this crap, but like, this is a call that's out of the blue. They're not thinking yeah. about buying or selling their home. So it's like, Hey, I'm a real estate agent. Have you thought, have you been watching the real estate market? Like two, sure. and you could just say something simple, like two of your neighbors just sold their homes in less than an hour. Is that something you thought about? You know, like, where would you live? What's your dream home? Like exactly. you just, you're asking a question flat out and then you're answering and trying to get into the door. The purpose is to set an appointment. Exactly. Uh, once you meet them, it's a lot easier to close someone than just doing it over the phone. They see you in person yeah. and there's a level of comfort. You know, once you meet someone in person, they're real, they're tangible, they're there, they can discuss things with you right. and you can establish a rapport, which I think is huge. And so are you guys door knocking too? We do. We do door knocking. That's always fun. Yeah. That's when you like anyhow. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's, you know, you get a little bit of mix of everything. You get people that slam the door on your face. You get people that actually are willing to talk to you and, and listen. Yeah. So again, we just try everything and just kind of see what sticks and then just take it from there. You know? But I think what's important I want to pull out that people understand is you're door knocking, you're calling and you're mailing and it's the same neighborhood. So yeah. people are like getting used to you. Yeah. And getting Brand recognition. Huh? Brand recognition is important, obviously. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, this is something like that takes more than a second, right? Like these, oh, this is like yeah. months, years in Correct. practice. I mean, yeah. We just started attacking a new neighborhood in our area and we're about five months in. We started in January. Right. And like I said, you know, we're getting close to signing listings and we're working on it, but it's definitely not, I mean, we've probably made over 500, 600 calls. It's at not least, easy. Yeah. It takes time. At least. And that was before Vulcan. Now we're, we're averaging 75 a day at yeah. minimum. You know, that's if we're slow and we like, or if we're super busy and don't have that much time to call. Right. I know. Yeah. Like for so, all my friends that do a uh, cold call, you guys are hand dialing. Oh. It's a lot different. It's I, a I lot remember different I, I spoke yeah, to you, Jennifer, and you were like, are you kidding? Yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm pulling up tax records and I'm Googling everything and I'm yellow page this, that. And you're like, stop right now. So what are you doing with all your time? Your new exactly. found time. We're, we're, a lot of extra time. We're making now. more calls. Okay. That's really all it is. Just exactly. making more calls and trying to set more appointments <clears throat> because our business is lead generation. That's the business. Exactly. That's everybody's business. It's sales. It's yeah. generate leads. You know, generate leads and generate customers. Yeah. If you don't, if you're not generating leads, then you don't have a business. Exactly. A thousand percent correct. Yes. That's awesome. Well, okay. So let's just pull out a couple of tips for people if they want to start like this kind of like process of circle prospecting. Mm -hmm. So I think like what I heard you say is, is tip one is like, choose your area and it have it be a place either you want to get into or a place that you already do a lot of business in. Mm -hmm. Yep. So with, um, with Westport, Connecticut, which is where mm -hmm. we're focusing on now, Kenny and I actually spent like three weeks just driving around the areas mm -hmm. and figuring out which we liked the most for us to represent, but also which we were comfortable with. Like right. yeah. the area we chose is five minutes from our office. Nice. You know, we're familiar with what's around there. We're familiar with the landmarks. We have friends who live in those neighborhoods. Yeah. So we're able to establish a connection, which I think is important right. because being on the phone with someone from a town, they're going to want to know you're entrenched in that town or at least know enough about it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, that makes sense. I think too, we have to make sure that there's enough movement in the area because there are some neighborhoods where people don't ever leave and like, that's not going to work. Right? right. No. Yeah. You have to make sure you're yeah, having turnover. Definitely turnover. You obviously have to be persistent because it doesn't happen overnight, but I would definitely invest time in different buckets. For example, door knocking one, 
um, you know, the Vulcan calls, uh, even mailers. So you definitely want to drop a little bit in each bucket and kind of see what stick sticks in that. And you're doing it at least monthly. Correct. Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're we do, sending out mailers we do monthly. mailers once a month and we do a door knocker <laughs> once a month as well. And then we do the phone calls. So nice. we're trying to get as many touches as possible. And then obviously we're, you know, all over social media all the time as well. Um, you know, we've discussed targeting that area on social media, but now, you know, with these iOS <laughs> updates coming out and everything kind of changing, we're kind of taking a step back from that and really analyzing the analytics to see if it's appropriate or if there's money better invested somewhere else. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. So if anybody has an idea. Yeah. I, well, I was just, you know, I just was listening to it on Tom Ferry's podcast this today. It mm -hmm. came out like yesterday and it's a lot. And I think it's going to be a few months before we really see what happens with those mm -hmm. algorithms, especially on Facebook. Yeah. And I think it'll be interesting to see how advertising kind of goes from there. Cause what I'm understanding is now you have the right as a user of Facebook with your Apple iPhone to basically completely disregard any ads at all, period. Right. That's what so, it seems like, or at least it's the tracking. Some, yeah, it, it was, again, I'm still trying to, like I said, it's so new and I, I'm not the most tech savvy person. So I really need to talk to our marketing team, but it's something that's interesting and really something I need to pay attention to though. Right. Yeah. And that stuff's always changing anyway. So like, as even though all that stuff changes, I think there's things that will remain the same. Real estate is a contact sport. In order to connect with people, you do the mailers, you, because people will always have addresses, right? So you're mailing and they'll be home so you can call them and tech and door knock them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. There, there's definitely certain things that are still the same that apply today that they did 30, 40 years ago in real estate. I mean, like you said, yeah. the personal relationships are always going to be there. The constant contacts always going to be there. Obviously now we have email and we're, then they had faxes and all this. So all that technology changes, but as far as sales goes at the end of the day, a lot of it stays, remains the same. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's relationship and contact sport. Okay. So we have two tips so far. We have choose your, uh, choose your neighborhood connect with them at different like levels, like period, like a lot, I guess. What do we think is our third tip here for people that are wanting to get into circle prospecting or door knocking? Just be persistent. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't get discouraged. You be don't persistent. expect to make a sale the first month, two months, three months, four, maybe first, you might spend a year right. prospecting a neighborhood to really grow yourself there. Right. Yeah, it's like come. a year or two. Yeah, you just right. have to put the work in and put the hustle in and understand it's gonna be time. There's no overnight successes. Right, and it's all a pipeline. I mean, as long as you can get people that trust you and that you you know build a relationship with, they may not wanna sell tomorrow or next week or not even next year, but if you're in the business for the long haul, Okay, a year later, you have a listing. And like I said, you just keep it keep yeah. it going from there. Snowball. What's your follow-up process once you get like a lead? So we have two folders. We'll put them in. It's either a warm lead or a hot prospect. And basically okay. the hot ones, depending on where they're at, it'll be once a week, once every two weeks, right. once a month, kind of what their time frame is. And then the warm leads are typically quarterly unless we think they need a little more. Right. Yeah. And it's something simple, you know. Hey, Mrs. Jones, checking in. How are you? Is there anything you need? Would you like an updated CMA on your house? You know, have you picked out that paint color you were looking to Whatever do? It is. Right. Yeah, I, you know, we make a little note and right. then we just follow up and just, again, it's just building rapport. Right. right. Well, and some people, what we'll do too, is we'll put them on an auto email system once every, a drip campaign once a month, once every few weeks. If they're trying to sell their home or their home is worth, let's say a million and a half, um, we'll send them homes once every week, once every month of homes that are actually selling for that price point so they can kind of compare it to their home. They can see our name, they can see our face. So just constantly staying in front of their face. No, that makes sense. I love it. So if people want to get a hold of you or they have a referral in Connecticut or they want, oh, hold on. Hey now. All right. So they if they have a referral like in Connecticut or they want to talk and ask you a little bit more about what you're saying when you're dialing, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys? You can call my cell or email me. My uh, Again, my name is Ken Zarella. I'm 203-209-3615. And my email is kenny.zarella, Z-E-R-E-L-L-A, at ravis, R-A-V-E-I-S.com. And then um, brian.christy at ravis.com. Brian Christie underscore realtor on Instagram. Um, Brian Christie on Facebook. You'll see picture of me and my family. Good luck if you can find me. Great. <laughs> um, and then 203-455-1223. But typically, yeah, just call, text, email, call or text, whatever. We're, we're always picking up the phone. Yep. I, I don't That's ever avoid awesome. phone calls. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys being on. Thanks a lot. Thanks Jennifer, thank us. you so much for having us. It was it's a truly an honor. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks again.